I'm John Davis, and this is Motor Week. Join us for a rough, tough, and ready road test of the reborn Ford Bronco. Pat Goss hitches up to some great towing advice down at Goss's garage. Stephanie Hart hops aboard for a bus ride through history. Then we'll head to the Outback with a Subaru built for the wilderness. To come drive with us next. Television's original automotive magazine brought to you by. For more than 30 years, Lucas Oil Products has helped people tackle mechanical problems in the automotive, marine, and industrial fields. From our original four core products heavy duty oil stabilizer, power steering stop leak, transmission fix, and fuel treatment, Lucas Oil has developed over 400 custom products to help both professionals and do it yourselfers. To learn more, visit lucasoil.com. Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. You're shopping for tires online, and you have questions. I do. We're TireRack.com, and we have answers. And tools to help. Like our tire decision guide. It's, uh, take a look. Oh. TireRack.com. Find. Deliver. Install. The original 1960s Ford Bronco is a true automotive icon. Tidy, simple, and immensely rugged. And while Ford claims that the all-new Bronco is its direct descendant, times have changed. Yet, like the original, its mission is clear. Give Jeep's Wrangler some serious competition. So let's find out how well this 2021 Bronco infuses its heritage with the demands of today. It's hard to take a drive anywhere without seeing a jacked up Jeep Wrangler driver wave to another jacked up Wrangler driver going down the road. And admittedly, on the road is where most of them stay. We say that to point out that neither the two or four door 2021 Ford Bronco necessarily needs to out Jeep a Wrangler. There's plenty of room in the SUV world for small, capable, rugged utilities that look like they'd be unstoppable in any situation. Our Bronco two-door certainly does, but for those that actually do venture deep into the bush, you'd better be able to back up those looks with some serious off-pavement performance. For Bronco, that starts with two 4x4 systems, one with a basic two-speed high-low shift on the fly transfer case, and a more advanced electromechanical unit. The Bronco, not to be confused with the crossover-based Bronco Sport, is built on a fully boxed steel frame with seven cross members. Plenty of add-on underbody protection is available, and there's a maximum of 11.6 inches of ground clearance. Up front, an independent suspension with alloy A-arms and long travel coil springs, while in back is a solid axle five-link rear with up to 35 inch tires available. Our two door black diamond series stuck with standard 32s on its 17 inch steel wheels. Black diamond trim includes upgraded front and rear bumpers, a black grille, rock rails, and a ride hard and put away wet vinyl upholstery with rubber flooring. Of course, like most these days, Ford relies on electronics to do much of the heavy lifting with multiple GOAT modes for their terrain management system, available trail control, trail turn assist, and even one pedal drive. It's not a chore at all to drive Bronco on pavement for daily use, with plenty of modern creature comforts and unique touches inside to make it interesting. Another big part of the Wrangler's appeal is the ability to remove its roof and doors. Bronco not only accomplishes this, the two front roof panels require no tools to remove, but does way better when it comes to take along storage. More power the better as far as most buyers are concerned, and Ford offers a pair of turbo engines to choose from. Standard is this 2.3 liter EcoBoost i4 with 300 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque. Optional is a 2.7 liter V6 turbo that at 330 only has 30 more horsepower, but cranks out 90 additional pound-feet of torque. 
A seven-speed manual trans with extra low crawler gear is standard with the 2.3 liter. The optional 10-speed automatic comes standard with the V6. So it's off to Mason-Dixon Dragway to see what our 2.3 manual is capable of. Well, all of that torque is clearly designed to get you over rocks, not down a drag strip. So it's a little slow off the line, taking a full eight seconds to 60. Not much friction zone in the clutch and a goofy vertical bar tachometer hamper the process. Selecting sport mode also automatically engages four high, even though we were getting much better results in two high. On the positive side, despite very long truck-like shifter throws, it engaged with ease and enabled smooth and speedy shifts throughout the 16.1 second quarter mile, ending at 85 miles per hour. Without a back-to-back -back comparison of comparably specced rigs, it's hard to say how it compares to the Wrangler when it comes to handling. Both oversteer and understeer are easily found, and the computer is quick to step in despite it never feeling close to being out of control. Ultimately, like the Wrangler, it's capable, but not exactly fun to throw around. Lots of forward pitch due to the long travel springs led to lengthy stopping distances of 132 feet from 60 miles per hour in our panic braking test. Government fuel economy ratings vary greatly with four-wheel drive systems and tire sizes. Our advanced 4x4 Black Diamond with the 2.3 liter and manual transmission comes in at 20 city, 22 highway, and 21 combined. We saw a respectable 22.4 miles per gallon of regular. Two-door pricing starts at $29,995, $4,700 more for the four-door. Lots of unique versions of the Bronco from there. Our Black Diamond Tester starts at $37,545 and limited first editions going for $58,410. Let's face it, when it comes to rugged, no-frills, off-road capability, the Jeep Wrangler and its CJ predecessor have had quite a run. It's doubtful that the 2021 Ford Bronco will put an end to its reign, but it's a fantastic alternative that does a lot of things well and has already earned necessary trail cred of both true off-roaders and those that just like to look like one. We talk a lot about cars, SUVs, and trucks here on Motor Week, but buses are a big part of the history of transportation, too. Well, the largest and most telling collection of buses in the country can be found at a museum in central Pennsylvania. Our FYI reporter Stephanie Hart was on board as these giant people movers took to the open roads to tell their story. I'm riding around in this 1954 Scenic Cruiser. We took this bus and others out of the AACA Museum for the day to celebrate them. These buses don't hit the road often. When they do, they're noisy and harder to drive than buses today. Fagel Motors became the first company to build a bus from the ground up in 1921. This 24 Fagel is one of only five left in the country. The AACA Museum in Hershey, Pennsylvania has two on display. It was basically a uh, commuter bus in California. Okay. It would go from Santa Monica to maybe to LA. 100 years later, people are still attracted to these buses and intrigued by their history. I am a big fan of the vintage buses. Just really exciting to see and learn the history of the buses. And preserving that history is what AACA is committed to doing. There's no one else preserving the bus industry. Today, a lot of people don't realize what the bus industry has done and how they got there. That's why hands-on learning is extremely important for younger and older generations. One of the buses needed a carburetor rebuilt. The kids that were helping us, they all looked and said, what's a carburetor? And then some of the guys who were older said, well, I've never rebuilt a carburetor. So I had to rebuild the carburetor yesterday, get it back on the bus and get it running. As electric cars become the thing that everyone wants, 
there's no longer going to be combustion engines in some vehicles, including buses. So we're trying to preserve that. Preserving that by celebrating that once a year during the Museum of Bus Transportation's Spring Fling. Some people traveled as far as California here to Hershey, Pennsylvania to check out all these unique buses. Gary Hatt owns this 40-foot bus that he converted into a motor home. It's outstanding. I've met a lot of people I've been chatting with on Facebook and talking to on the phone for a long time. So now I get to meet them in person and see their buses. So it's worked out great. These buses from the 50s and 60s were extremely popular. People remember riding these buses back and forth to work or to go on vacation. The public who rode on buses between cities would have rode on the 4104, the 4106, and the Cine Cruiser. They are predominant GM, and they controlled the market, and everyone recognizes them. People also recognize this one. This was the backup bus used in the 1994 movie Speed, starring Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. It was a backup bus, but they would have to rip the floors up of the vehicles and have them staged there. So if something happened to the primary bus, they could continue to shoot because the shooting was without a floor because that's where the bombs were. So we don't know where that bus stood in the sequence, but we don't know if it was used or not, but it was there. Cool regardless, fueling the timeless fascination with buses, no doubt. I'm a motor coach operator. I've been driving buses for 27 years. Started working off at Greyhound driving the MC9 with a stick shift. Had a love for appreciation of buses ever since I was a little kid. My great-grandfather was a bus driver, so when I got off of school, I played hooky. So I would always get on his bus and ride around. My grandfather never said anything, but I found out that I fell in love with the engines, the way the suspension was, and I became a bus nut. And he made us one, too. We often talk about truck and SUV tow ratings, but what exactly do they mean? Well, Pat Goss is here to make sure you know the details before hitching up and hitting the road. Here's another great idea gone wrong. See, these carriers, well, they work really well to carry things on the outside of the vehicle. You can add a lot of carrying capacity to just about anything. But if you look at this one, it's almost dragging the ground. Now, why? Well, that's because the person with the vehicle didn't do proper planning. You see, the hitch that's on the vehicle, they added that so that they could use one of these carriers. It is a class one. The carrier has a larger class three uh, fitment on the front of it. So in order to put the two things together, you have to have an adapter. That means that there's space in there, and that space allows the uh, carrier to droop like we see here. Plus, because it's extended out, it puts more weight on the back of the vehicle, again, changing the way it sits, and it drops down like this. Proper planning. Know what you're going to tow, then match the towing equipment to it. Now, the most popular is going to be a Class 3. That's this one right here. Uh, they go all the way up to a Class 5. This is for 21,000 pounds right here. So you have to match that. You also have to match the height of your vehicle because these come in different configurations as far as the amount of drop down to the trailer. You have to know the tongue weight of the trailer so you get the right equipment there. And if you have multiple trailers with different size balls or something like that, here is one that has all of those mounted right to it. Plus it has a hook that you can use for recovery work or maybe you have to haul some uh, brush or wood around the house. Works well for that. Put a chain on it and away you go. Time to pick some tasty first drive, first fruits with another quick spin. The Lamborghini Huracan made landfall in the U.S. back in 2014, and with it came the winds of change for the Italian brand. 
Not only did it churn up sales records, but it brought on a flood of motorsport success, including three straight wins at the Daytona 24 Hours, which has led to this 2021 Uricon STO. STO stands for Super Trofeo Omologata. Before you go digging for your Italian to English dictionary, Omologata means homologation. So this STO is a street legal Uricon, heavily inspired by the Uricon Super Trofeo and GT3 Evo race cars. And that's evident even at first glance. The front bonnet, fenders, and bumper are all one single piece, while these new ducts direct airflow for cooling and downforce. Speaking of downforce, this fixed rear wing has three manual settings and when set to its most aggressive position can create over 900 pounds of downforce. This shark fin and air scoop are just two more of the many air manipulating features sprinkled all over the body, which itself is 75% carbon fiber. And there's more of it inside the cabin, which has been thoroughly stripped of excess weight. I mean, we're talking pull straps instead of door handles type weight savings. The engine is still a 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V10 with 631 horsepower going to the rear wheels by way of a seven speed dual clutch transmission. It's no more powerful than the Uricon Performante, but quicker gear changes, stickier Bridgestone rubber, and rear wheel steering make it considerably faster on a road course. Which is why Lamborghini brought Motor Week to the harrowingly fast desert oasis known as Willow Springs. The cornering grip in this thing is absolutely insane. I'm taking this corner 111 miles per hour. Just when I think I should probably let off because I'm gonna run out of grip, it's just, it's still there, it never relents. With a price tag of over $328,000, Lamborghini admits most buyers won't ever take the Uricon STO to a racetrack. And if that is the case, well, that's just a depressing waste of a great track car. And we'll have more quick spins soon. Well, here's the long and the short of it. Our long-term all-electric 2021 Porsche Taycan is heading away for good after being with us for just a short four weeks time. So what did we learn about this EV that we didn't already know from our original Taycan road test? Turns out a lot. With Porsche, performance is usually the first thing that jumps out. But in this Taycan, I think it takes a back seat to the comfort. This thing is so smooth on the highway and there's hardly any road or wind noise. And don't forget about that performance in the back seat if you're trying to pass because there's always plenty of torque on tap with just a quick stab of the throttle. We stabbed that throttle plenty over the 3,900 miles we traveled and never got tired of the unrelenting rush of acceleration while contemplating the fact that no matter how many times we did it, we still didn't need to stop at a gas station to fill up. Just pop her on the old charger when you get home. As for convenience, there's a charge port on both sides of the vehicle, so you can park however you want. We consistently were able to beat the system, if you will, with actual driving miles exceeding the car's projections. On one particular day trip, we covered 95 miles, yet only used 72 miles of indicated range. Hooked up to a commercial fast charger, we got 170 miles of range in 30 minutes, at a cost of around $16. So driving the Taycan proved to be as stress-free as it was fun. Gas-powered cars will sure miss them, but when brands like Porsche are able to so successfully preserve their DNA while transitioning to battery power, this 2021 Taycan reminds us that the all-electric future is not going to be so bad. In the nearer future, we'll check in on our Subaru Crosstrek and Volkswagen Jetta GLI on the next MotorWeek long-term road test update. The Subaru Outback first arrived in the mid-1990s as a practical station wagon with all-wheel drive, able to take your family on a wide variety of adventures. Over the years, and despite now insisting it's really an SUV, they've built upon that theme with ever-increasing capabilities. Now for 2022, Subaru goes wild and out.
The Subaru Outback prides itself in being a go-anywhere family adventure vehicle and has truly played a big role in the almost universal appeal of all-wheel drive today. But buyers are always looking for that next level of capabilities, and there are plenty of engineers getting paid to search for it. So we have the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness, a next level Outback built for those that want to venture further into the wild for their family fun time. Thankfully, it's far more than just a trim package and bold new graphics. Wilderness starts with a suspension lift, as all macho makeovers should. Just shy of an inch has been added, courtesy of longer shocks and springs, both front and rear. That boosts ground clearance to a respectable nine and a half inches. Then 17 inch matte black alloy wheels get Yokohama ATs. All Outbacks are all wheel drive, of course, and the Wilderness gets the upgraded X mode version, but they've also done some tweaking here as revised software allows for smoother switching in and out of low speed mode. The rear differential has a new 444 to 1 ratio, and Subaru's linear Tronic CVT is also revised to improve low end torque delivery to the front wheels. The Wilderness uses the Outback XT's turbocharged 2.4 liter Boxer 4 engine with the same 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. Sorry, no flat six. But the fact that the combo is rated to tow 3,500 pounds does give some credence to Subaru's SUV claim. Both front and rear bumpers have been beefed up to handle a little more abuse and yes, look cooler too. There's also a new skid plate up front, a different grille, copper tone accents, unique wheel arch cladding, and a black anti-glare hood sticker. Up top, there's a substantial roof rack, perfect for mounting that overlanding tent you've had your eye on. The interior features durable and stylish StarTex upholstery with new Wilderness logos and copper contrast stitching. That copper finish is mirrored throughout the space, and both gunmetal gray and brushed aluminum replace the typical chrome accents. Naturally, all weather floor mats are standard. At our test track, the Wilderness's quarter mile experience started off with a soft opening, but the full show arrived when the TAC hit 4,000 RPM. At that point, you're off to the races and a 60 in a brisk 5.8 seconds. The CVT is what it is at this point. We've come to terms with its extended high RPM nature, but at least the engine sounds pretty decent and pulls strongly. We finished the quarter mile in 14.4 seconds at 98 miles per hour. Higher ground clearance generally translates to more roll at the track, and we did experience plenty of it in the wilderness, but not to unsettling levels. At times, the stability system seemed totally on board with hammering through here and let us get away with some oversteer. And at other times, it shut down our momentum at the first hint of understeer. Through it all, steering was very responsive, and once we found a speed we could all agree upon, it was even a little on-pavement fun. Brakes felt strong initially with a good 113-foot average stopping distance from 60, but we did begin to notice some fade after five or six runs. All of the revisions have taken a toll on government fuel economy ratings, falling just a bit to 22 city, 26 highway, and 24 combined. Surprisingly, the wilderness falls not at the top, but in the middle of the Outback lineup, with a starting price of $38,120. It's amazing how little changes can make big differences, much like when Subaru toughened up the Impreza wagon, called it the XV Crosstrek, and it instantly became our favorite Subaru utility. Well, move over, Crosstrek. The 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness is here, looking to take you and your family where no other Outback has. Even better news, the Wilderness theme and name are set to spread throughout the Subaru lineup. Crosstrek Wilderness? Yes, please.
Well, that's our show. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, for more Motor Week, including daily news updates, podcasts, and even complete episodes, cruise on over to pbs.org slash motorweek. And I hope you'll join us next time for a test of one of the most luxurious SUVs on the road, the Mercedes Maybach GLS 600. Then it's back to the real world for some kicks courtesy of Nissan. Till then, I'm John Davis. We'll see you right here on Motor Week. To learn more about Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine, visit pbs.org slash motorweek. To order a DVD of this program, call 1-800-873-6154. Motor Week has been brought to you by... For more than 30 years, Lucas Oil Products has helped people tackle mechanical problems in the automotive, marine, and industrial fields. From our original four core products, heavy duty oil stabilizer, power steering stop leak, transmission fix and fuel treatment, Lucas Oil has developed over 400 custom products to help both professionals and do-it-yourselfers. To learn more, visit lucasoil.com. Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. You're shopping for tires online and you have questions. I do. We're TireRack.com and we have answers and tools to help. Like our tire decision guide. It's a, uh, take a look. Oh. TireRack.com, find, deliver, install. This program was produced by Maryland Public Television, which is solely responsible for its content. PBS.